Moving on to our next session, multidisciplinary rule-based approach to asset allocation. For this, I'd like to invite on stage Mr. Ashutosh Bhargava, Head of Research, Nippon India Mutual Funds. Well, he's the Head of Equity Research and Fund Manager at Nippon Life India Asset Management Limited. And he has over 14 years of post-MBA work experience in investment research. He's been with Nippon India for over 12 years now and prior to that, he worked as an analyst for over two years at JP Morgan in their global economics team based out of Mumbai. He specializes in macro and rule-based investment strategies. And this session is now, he's the captain of. So thank you so much for joining us here and I'll hand it to you. So, good morning. So, I have a tough topic, honestly, to talk about in a very short time. But this is very, to start with, this is a very familiar chart. Everyone has seen, this is what we show to all of our clients, right? We all know India has been the great story uh, and uh, will continue to remain so. That's long term. Now, if you divide the time frames into shorter periods, this is annual market performance uh, of US market, Indian market then the trend is not upward sloping, it's become a bit random. You further break it up to monthly performance, it completely becomes random, right? Um, what happens to year one doesn't tell you anything about the market in year two. So there is hardly any correlation of what happens in market performance year after year. Now, this was about the asset class. If you look at the sub-asset class, since 2005, since we have a small cap index in our country, there's hardly any difference in the performance of large cap, small cap, mid cap. Absolutely nothing. Point to point, they have given similar returns, which is around 15%. But if you break it up, uh, we all know that the leadership keeps changing period after period. Sometimes large cap outperform small caps and vice versa. We know this also happens primarily at asset class level. Now this is under you know, everyone's knowledge and as advisors, as asset locators, this is what we try to do to handhold our clients to navigate this ups and downs, changing in leadership and asset class and sub-asset class through our experience, wisdom, and so on, right? Now, what we have sh uh, seen so far is that the only permanent thing is change, and uh, the leadership keeps changing, and people try to navigate these changes through, primarily through two methods. So you've been hearing, you'll be hearing a lot about macro opinions throughout this day, uh, what people think would happen to India, what people think would happen to the world. And macro as a subject is very seductive, if I may use this word. Uh, in hindsight, a lot of things become clear. But my personal experience of doing this work for 17 years is that forecasting is extremely difficult what we are discussing today about, for example, India's outperformance, right? Hand on the heart, if I would have given you a simple equation that there is a war going on, there's a fear of world war, oil will go to 130, there is a massive interest spiral all over the world. IMF is talking about global recession. Tell me what is INR, what is 10-year GSEC, and where is Sensex? And I'm sure we wouldn't have given the answer that we know today. So we need to accept some bit of forecasting humility, particularly in a post-COVID world. And COVID, one thing has, COVID has taught us is uh, that forecasting was difficult even before COVID, but forecasting humility is a lesson I think post-COVID we should all appreciate. Otherwise, it's very simple. If you know what's, go what's going to be growth for next two, three years, what's going to be inflation for next two, three years, I can tell you which asset class you can invest. Very simple, if there is inflation, and there is growth, 
get into equities. If you think there is a deflation happening, get into bonds. But the reality is that all of us are pretty bad at forecasting. Now, this very simple chart, uh, if you look at this chart, this is up till uh, December, 20, uh, December 2019, that what as an industry analyst think of index forecast uh, of EPS two years down the line, and what is the actual reality? You can see most of us have this optimism bias, and hardly our forecasts are right. They either overshoot or they undershoot. So I think macro-based asset location, while they may look very intuitive, to my mind, it's very, very difficult. The other approach is to go for valuation. Everyone knows this is what we preach. Sell high, buy low. When we say sell high, we are talking about uh, Valuation, when there is higher valuation, you have to reduce equity allocation. When there is lower valuation, we have to increase. Fair enough. Perhaps the better way to navigate cyclicality in asset markets. But I have a problem with this approach also. Three problems. First is which valuation parameters to take. There are a plethora of them. Based on their own belief, people use one over the other, right? But the fundamental problem is, if you are honest, think what is happening to valuations. When I joined my current organization 15 years ago, this was the average valuation for the last 10 years, 12 times. Today, as we speak, the last 10 year average valuation is around 18 times. Pre-COVID, it was around 16, 6, 17 times. Now, how you would have used average valuation when they are ever rising, right? This, and now we can all say that it was happening because of X, Y, Z reason, de perennially declining interest rate, etc. But it's all in the hindsight. The reality is that in real time, what you thought as an average valuation, it rarely come. Market always remained higher than that. The second point, and I think is most important point to my mind is, we look at Nifty valuation or Sensex valuation. What is Nifty and Sensex? They are portfolios with a name. What goes into those portfolios, it keeps changing. Now think of two sectors. One is cyclical, leverage-oriented sector, like infrastructure, capital good. And you have sector which is more cyclical, uh, less cyclical, more compounding, high ROE sectors like, say, FMCG. You don't give same multiples to these two sectors. Now, the composition changes materially of the index called Nifty, but you are using the same price earning multiple throughout the period and determining the temperature of the market. I think it's a very wrong way. So you need to take into account the constituent changes and therefore, I think uh, people again commit mistake of looking at market multiples and determine whether the market is cheap or not. Second problem. The third problem is that valuation don't work in the short term. So I'm showing you different time periods in US and India. And what is very clear that in the long term, buy low and sell high works, in the shorter time frame, it's an, it has a lot of noise value. It does not have any information value up till one year, right? So they can remain irrational according to you for a longer period of time. Now, same thing people do with trying to ascertain whether small caps are cheaper than the large caps. Again, the same analysis. You don't know about what is the composition of small cap versus large cap and you are only getting into the integers and determining whether A is cheaper than B and vice versa. To my mind, it's not the right approach. So if macro is not the approach and valuation is not the best approach, then how do we do a subtle location? To me, narratives and forecasting are overrated. 
most people indulge in that. Assessment as a tool, as a technique, as a discipline is an underrated, uh, I would say, uh, tool or uh, to determine the asset location. There is something to learn, something to take from different approaches and you can combine them and come up with more effective, more durable and sustainable way of doing asset location. And that's where I am here to talk about multidisciplinary approach of asset location. And mind you, I'm very well aware that at Nippon, at various fund houses, lot of asset managers are trying to do that. First and the foremost is, it may look like this. It may include valuations. It may look, it may involve some bit of macro variables. It may it also include uh, variables which intellectual people don't like. Something like technicals or momentum, but it's mighty effective. Now think of valuation as a, as a tool. One thing you can do is to combine two or three valuation tool and come up with one more comprehensive tool than choosing between say a price to book or price to earning or any other tool. So you have to have holistic approach when it comes to selecting which valuation parameter you are choosing. And secondly, valuations are immaterial if you don't have a view on interest rate. Tomorrow, if bank FD rates are 10%, trust me, whatever we are talking about in terms of flows which are coming into the market will vastly vanish. Let's not be mistaken about it. Interest rates are extremely important because they are discount rate for future earning for us as analysts. And they're also the hurdle rate for an investor to choose between the next opportunity cost he or she has, right? So you can't ignore interest rates. To me, 15 time market can be expensive if tomorrow FD rates are 10%. And 20 times one year forward P can be cheap if FD rates are 5%. It is as simple as that. So you have to take into account interest rate and you have to also take into account more comprehensive way of looking at two or three variables when it comes to, when you choose the valuation parameter. Other thing is, our market is far more integrated than you and I think. Don't think that, you know, if I keep getting out and it won't matter to us. It's, we are all discussing in the hindsight that this has happened and I wish it can continue. But the reality is that our economy, our earnings, I would say almost 45 to 50% of India's earnings have linkages to domestic uh, global demand and global pricing. I can name you a lot of sectors and companies. The point I'm trying to make here is that global factors also matters when it comes to your asset location or asset location to your customers. The most powerful parameter and simple parameter is dollar. Trade weighted dollar performance, if the trade weighted dollar is strong, emerging market underperform, equity as an asset class underperform. It has been true for the last 30 years and I don't think it is going to change in a hurry. Similarly, if you look at the set of commodities, like copper and other commodities, strong commodities means strong global demand as well as strong risk on sentiment. Again, you can use it as an alternative way of allocating your money. And how will you do that? Because you don't know anything about the dollar, you don't know anything about the commodity, right? Simple, trend is your most important friend. As I said, most fundamental guy won't appreciate it, but it's very counterintuitive to buy low and sell high, but it is extremely powerful. It has worked in the last 40 years when fundamentals were working. But even if you look at the longer history, this is something which will always remain. If someone is coming from Mars and want to invest, and that person is going to use momentum, that means he's buying what is working and not ignoring what is not working, that person is like most likely to beat 90-95% of the participants. Simple approaches. So if you combine all these, put together in one approach, what we are trying to do here is, we are trying to improve our odds. There's nothing right or wrong when it comes to asset location. We are all trying to use our mental models. We are all trying to, based on our experience, we are try, help, trying to handle our investors. But in more 
comprehensive multidisciplinary approach can improve our odds and um, that's that's the only simple point i wanted to put across a uh, lot of fund houses are doing it in the, in the form of asset location funds uh, but it in your own framework also you have to start thinking beyond macro and valuation and i have to have more comprehensive comprehensive